Our own star, the Sun, may have been responsible for major global cataclysms in our ancient past, and perhaps in humanity's future to come. So in this video I will look at our Sun's influence on Earth's history, and the possibility that our ancient or prehistoric ancestors experienced and recorded cataclysmic solar events on a scale that we've never seen, which if happened today might result in devastating global catastrophe and destroying most of our electrical infrastructure, putting the remaining survivors in a new dark age. For years now we've had satellites monitoring our star with an array of cameras and sensors, enabling us to be far more informed about its activity and its effects on Earth. You've probably heard of the Carrington event of 1859, where a solar storm sent two coronal mass ejections which hit Earth's magnetosphere directly, causing fantastic auroras which illuminated as far south as Columbia and as far north as Queensland. It also fried telegraph systems and caused scientific equipment to malfunction at the time, which was the first real indicator that the auroras we see are caused by electromagnetic activity which, if it happened today, it would cause widespread blackouts and electrical disruptions. Coronal mass ejections or solar flares, for those who don't know, are tremendous explosions in the atmosphere of the Sun, which are capable of releasing as much energy as a billion megatons of TNT to stream through the solar system. Caused by the sudden release of magnetic energy, in just a few seconds flares can accelerate solar particles to very high velocities, almost to the speed of light, and heat solar material to tens of millions of degrees. A similar sized flare to the 1859 event happened in 2012, but missed the Earth by nine days fortunately. And the largest solar flare recorded with scientific equipment to date happened in April 2001, which NASA confirmed was larger than the 1859 flare. And even though it wasn't even facing towards Earth, it still caused an R4 radio blackout on the sunlit side of Earth, with R5 being the most severe classification. Just imagine if that 2001 flare actually hit our magnetosphere. I guess we were lucky with that one. And that's just two flares capable of causing major disruptions recorded since we've had scientific equipment in space monitoring the sun. It's only a matter of time until a sizeable CME makes contact with our magnetosphere again. And if we're not prepared to counteract its effects, then we may be looking at another dark age for humanity yet to come. We go through what are known as Milankovitch cycles, which is the cyclical movement related to the Earth's orbit around the Sun, where the eccentricity of the orbit, precession, and axial tilt determine approximately how much solar heat the planet receives. The eccentricity of the orbit cycle lasts around 100,000 years, the axial tilt cycles last around 41,000 years, and the precession wobble cycle lasts around 24,000 years which you can clearly see these patterns visible in some of the ice core data, with some of our measurements stretching back 800,000 years. We estimate that the beginning of the last major ice age started around 2.5 million years ago, and even though we generally think the ice age ended around 12,000 years ago, it may not have actually ended yet, and there's still a lot of debate about the details. Some scientists think it may actually be part of a much longer ice age that started as much as 40 million years ago. And looking at some of these graphs makes you wonder if we're about to go into another cooling phase sometime soon, as we appear to be in around the same position on the graphs as the last cooling phase started to dip. We are aware of and have a lot of evidence around the climate disruption known as the Younger Dryas, as the Earth was going through its last warming cycle as there's a clear, almost sudden drop in the data for over a thousand years from around 12,800 to around 11,700 years ago, as well as the archaeological records showing microspherules and black mats over a large percentage of the world, which could only appear to be caused by extreme heat, usually postulated to have been caused by widespread wildfires and such, possibly from an astronomical impact. But could a large solar ejection also possibly explain this and offer a more logical explanation for how this almost charring of the Earth is so widespread? And were its effects even possibly recorded and depicted by ancient man in petroglyphs? Anthony Parat, a plasma physicist, has conducted numerous plasma experiments over time and has recorded many formations that the plasma takes and explains that these conductive formations the plasma takes would be similar to if a large amount of the Sun's ejector were to impact the Earth's magnetosphere, 
and would glow as an auroral effect through these various shape formations in reaction to the high amount of charged particles streaming through the atmosphere. Then is also the question of how big the flare could have been, and was their excess ejector literally raining fire down to the ground, or would it act as extreme electrical discharge generating mass amounts of lightning striking everywhere? Well, I'm not a qualified physicist, so I'd love to know if anybody has a better idea of what the effects would be. So now we know about the plasma formations, let's take a look at these rock art comparisons with plasma formations taken from the lab. And they have rather striking similarities to the shapes and the characteristics. This type of rock art is also found almost everywhere in the world from different cultures, except not often in higher latitudes. But now when you look at some other types of rock art and paintings from ancient or prehistoric man, you can for the most part clearly make out what they're depicting. But then when you look at these pictures from around the world and compare them to the plasma formations, and the fact that there are many of these similar petroglyphs around the world, then it seems people were actually recording some event that happened, or at least depicting something significant, rather than just drawing people. The heads I can understand, as they might be depicting headdresses made from animals they've killed, or maybe they've just taken artistic liberty and are just depicting animal heads on humans, or something else. But in regular examples of ancient rock art, you don't normally see things like extra limbs, especially strange shaped ones and other things that seem to be depicted on these pictographs. Also, the circles either side of the formation being depicted almost accurately in position of the plasma formation's vortexes is another extremely compelling detail. And throw in the fact that many rock art examples are found hidden away in caves, which would have been the perfect retreat for safety if a destructive event like that occurred, and may also help explain why some of these underground or cliff protected complexes were created for people to live in at the time. But there still seems to be this mysterious dark period for humanity which lasted a few thousand years until around the time of the Sumerians. So is it possible that we are at a more advanced stage than we thought prior to the Younger Dryas period, and whatever happened may have knocked back humanity and civilization to a more primitive state again? And could it even possibly happen to us again? With that being said, I'm going to wrap up this video there. So what do you think? Does a solar outburst seem like a likely culprit of the Younger Dryas climate disruption? Was it more likely a comet or asteroid impact? Or do you think there are other geological or astronomical events that could be responsible? Please leave a comment with your thoughts, and I look forward to more research coming to light. After all, our sun in many ways controls and affects everything in the solar system, so it would be nice to stay on its good side. Well, thank you ever so much for watching. As usual, there will be some links in the description to some interesting pages about this topic. Well, that's all from me, so please share this video with someone interested in these topics, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care of yourselves out there. <laughs>